What's up guys, we're over here at my boba shop, Honey Bear Boba in San Francisco, California. I'm gonna take you guys inside, kinda show you guys what it's really like to own a boba shop, some of the problems we have, some of the hurdles we have to go through, talk about the design, and how much we ultimately make at a boba shop like this. Let's go. Okay, guys, well let's talk about how we even came up with the concept and why a boba shop. So, believe it or not, most of our concepts come from when we're drinking, we're partying, we're breaking up. So my partners and I, it's myself, Larry June and two others, and we kind of sat down, we were drinking and said, hey, you know what, we should do business together. And we didn't know what exactly that business was gonna be. It, we didn't know if it was gonna be more real estate or a bubble shop. And so ultimately what happened was during the pandemic, all the stores were closing, and we noticed that this store right here was closing and it was already a chocolate shop. Why is that important? It's important because when you're opening up a boba or a restaurant, if it's already a restaurant or already a boba shop, it's very easy to convert the concept without having to go over a lot of the hurdles with the health department, with the building department, with the city. So we found the place and we negotiated with the landlord right then and there. And because it was in the midst of the pandemic, nobody knew if commercial spaces were gonna make it or if they were gonna die. So we did take a little bit of a gamble, but to offset that gamble, we made sure to negotiate a killer lease long-term and we did gross rent, not triple net. If you don't know what gross net or uh, gross rent or triple net is, the difference is when you get a triple net lease, you're responsible for the property tax, insurance, and things of that nature. With this one, it was just gross and really cheap. So now let's go inside. We're gonna talk a little bit about the design, what we actually did, and how much we spent to really get the space up and running. Ready? Let's go. All right, so immediately when you walk in, we, the flooring was already nicely stained, and this beautiful wood here that you see was already here, so we didn't have to spend that money to really put it in. This is very expensive to do, so I'm glad it was already here. As I mentioned, we took over a chocolate shop, so they had already kind of did a lot of the design work, a lot of the, the sinks, the you know hood, and all that nature. So that saved us a ton of money. The only thing we did do, um, really to complete the wood look is if you look up the top, you're gonna see that there is two by four running horizontal from the walls. We did that, it was very inexpensive to do. I think the wood itself was maybe about $1,000 and another $1,500 to have my crew come in, sand it, stain it, and install it. Believe it or not, we actually put in some elbow grease ourselves. I hand sanded these, I hand stained this with the crew, um, but I had them install it because I don't want to be on the ladder. You know, I'm precious cargo, I didn't want to fall off a ladder. If you go over here, we actually built out this little wood, I guess, facade to cover the equipment, the machinery, and we can kind of go back here and see. All right, so as we kind of go into the back kitchen, the cool thing is the three compartment sink, the hand sink, the prep sink, the tables, this is very expensive to do. And if you were to have to uh, put a dollar amount on this, I would say it would cost roughly about twenty dollars to $25,000 to have somebody run all the electrical, run all the plumbing, and then buy all this metal fabrication. So because we took over a shop, again, we saved all that money. What we did have to buy were the boilers, the tea machines, the you know boba supplies that you see here. And I think all in, it came out to about $20,000 or so. <laughs> I haven't made a boba in hell long. I don't even drink boba no more. We gotta start with the boba first. I'm gonna do a little black sugar. Mm. So you know, I would say, the main thing with opening the boba shop was that it's so much fun. I get the most joy building. I get the most joy when it's like you're tinkering, coming up with the menu, with the concept, with the branding. Like we did all that, so that was the cool part. Here we go, let's see. So even like this is our number one bestseller. This is the brown sugar milk crema. Uh, we substituted the regular milk with the oat milk. Gives it that roasted flavor. Go ahead and put it in this thing right here. Mm. We sell over $200,000 of this every single year. Number one bestseller. Shake it up well. We get our Cus Custom Taiwan. Our lids, matte black, comes from Taiwan. Shake well. Our straws are compostable. Let's go. Mm. Fire, fire. 
Let's go over a little bit more about the numbers. So realistically, because we took over a store that used to be a chocolate shop, that cut down the build cost by, I would say, $200,000. So on, every, on average, I built out multiple stores before. It costs anywhere from $250,000 to $350,000 if you were to go from ground up, meaning you have to put the sinks in, you have to run the electrical, build out the space. That's how much it usually costs. But like I said, because we took over one, our build out cost for this store was only $45,000. And that includes the inventory and getting it all up and running and actually even having a little bit of a leeway for payroll um, when we were opening the store. So very cheap, very affordable. Going over the numbers, we actually made all of our money back in four months because, well, you know, the store is so profitable. We had a line out the door right when we opened and that is thanks to my buddy, Larry June, for being so popular, for introducing this drink to his audience and the support was unreal. And if you don't know Larry June, you better Google him, A, 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 numbers. And after four months, the store just kept doing better and better. We started introducing the merch. We had sweaters, we had rugs, we had keychains, we had masks, all of which ultimately upped the sales. And you know, by the end of the year, we were very happy with the result. We were very happy with what the store had accomplished. We had netted over uh, six figures in profit and it was a very healthy relationship. Everybody knew what their role was. Everybody had clear, concise expectation of one another. And that really makes it very important for a partnership, which, you know, if you're not clear, you're not concise, and you don't have the communication skill, partnerships can go very eerie. But in my case, most of the time, they always work out very well. And that leads me to a very important point in business and in partnership. You see, to be successful, you have to know what partners you're bringing in and their strengths. So for example, Larry is a master marketer. He knows how to get this product you know, into the minds, into the hands of his consumer. And he brought Boba to a completely different demographic. Myron, my other partner, very good with design. He came up with the cup, the bear, the, you know, the color schemes and everything like that. And even the merch, right? The mask, he designed the mask, he designed the shirts. So he ran that division. My brother Dames over there, he was very good with finding the location, negotiating the lease, and ultimately, um, you know, kind of being around to take care of any problem that arises. Me, my thing is, I've opened multiple stores before, so I knew how to do it. I knew how to manage, I knew how to uh, tinker with the recipe, I knew how to, you know, put the right management in place so that the owners don't have to physically be there and run the store. You don't see me making the bobas. You don't see me running the register. See, that's the management part that is very important to the success of a business like this. And I also think it's important that when it comes to running a boba shop or any like service-based business, it's the culture, right? How are you treating the employees? How much are you compensating them for? Are you having team outings? Are you, you know, stern but also nice? There's a fine line that you have to kind of navigate when you want a store to be successful. Because ultimately, if the employees aren't happy, they're not gonna be able to put the love and the care and the dedication in making a solid drink for the customer. So what is it really like owning a boba shop? When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. What do I mean by that? Look, boba is seasonal, right? So when it's good, like right now, springtime, and you're making all this money, the problems kind of like don't hurt you as much. During the winter time, when things are slow and sales are kind of like eh, and you're really just getting by, and the problems come up, you're kind of like, oh man, I really want to quit or it's not really worth my time anymore. But that's why it's important that in business, you don't look at the moment, but you look at the big picture, right? At that single moment, you might not be feeling it, you might kind of hate the job, but you got to remember, the big picture is you're having fun, you'll be able to express your creativity, you're making money, and ultimately, it's pretty rewarding owning a boba shop. But at some point, I do think that um, we either have to franchise this or start licensing out the brand to really scale it and grow bigger to make it worthwhile for me to spend the hour or two a week that, you know, focusing on this business. So if you're thinking about opening a bulbage business and you don't know where to start, hit the comment section down below. If you have any other questions that you want me to answer regarding owning and operating one, drop a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer all of them. Peace.